So in the first part of this review, what I want to talk about is how the spectrophotometer works, how we're going to use it in our experiment. Okay, so I have that instructional video that actually shows you how to use the spectrophotometer. Place a sample in it, you get a particular absorbance or transmittance, but what I want to talk about is how it determines that absorbance and transmittance. So first and foremost, we need to talk about the visible spectrum of light. Okay, this is one that you've probably learned several times before. Roy G. Biv. Okay, violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Okay, so these are the colors of light that we can actually perceive with the naked eye. Um, anything beyond violet of the visible spectrum of light, so anything that has a shorter wavelength than that, or anything that has a longer wavelength than, the, than red light does, uh, we cannot actually perceive. So infrared light, microwaves, radio waves, we're not capable of seeing those. Um, when we come out over here beyond violet, um, if we talk about ultraviolet light, x-rays, or gamma rays, they have uh, very, very short wavelengths, and we also cannot see those. But this particular light here, the visible spectrum, we can perceive. And what you need to know about the visible spectrum is that it is of a variety of different wavelengths. So light, of course, say, uh, travels in wavelengths or in waves. And those waves can be measured based upon their relative wavelengths. The longer the wavelength of light, the lower the energy. Okay, so in the visible spectrum of light, red has the longest wavelength, which means red also, light has the lowest energy. Violet, on the other hand, in the visible spectrum of light, has the shortest wavelength, and it has the highest energy. So this is the visible spectrum. Now, objects that we come into contact with in everyday life and molecules that exist inside of cells and in any number of other objects have the ability to absorb certain wavelengths of this visible spectrum of light while at the same time they have the ability to transmit other wavelengths. So if we perceive something like my shirt, it's red, my shirt has the capacity to absorb some of the colors in the visible spectrum of light and the wavelengths that correspond to those colors. However, it also transmits red light, which is why it appears red. So it's not able to absorb the wavelength that corresponds to red light very well. Knowing this, we can take various samples or solutions. We can place them in a spectrophotometer and see how well they absorb or transmit various wavelengths of light. And that's exactly what you did in your particular exercise. Okay, so we have a spectrophotometer. And inside the spectrophotometer, what you have is a light bulb. And that light bulb, with the use of some mirrors, can actually be changed so that we have different colors of light. So this light bulb is going to give off some color of light of the visible spectrum of light. Okay? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, or violet. And of course, that particular color is going to have a particular wavelength associated with it. So if we go to a shorter wavelength, we're going to get closer to the violet and blue end of the spectrum. If we turn the spectrophotometer's wavelength knob so that it's a larger or longer wavelength, then we're going to go to the red or orange values of the spectrum. Okay? So we've got these wavelengths, whatever it is, whatever we choose for this wavelength, what we can then do is we can add some sample that we want to test. So this sample is going to contain some biological molecule. In our particular exercise, this particular sample contained protein. And we want to see how well this protein can absorb a specific wavelength of light. 
And so this protein absorbs some of the light that passes through it, but some of that light is not going to be absorbed. It's going to be transmitted. Okay, so the light that is transmitted passes through our sample, and it's going to be quantified by a meter. Okay, so this meter catches the light that does pass through, quantifies it, and that's going to tell us the amount of light that was absorbed and the percent of light that's transmitted. Okay? The percent of light that's transmitted is done out of 100%. The amount of light absorbed is given to us between 0 and 2.0. It actually is less than 2.0. If it goes any higher than that, the absorbance, uh, actually if the absorbance goes any higher than 1.999, the machine begins to flash. Typically, what you probably saw in your lab was values between 0 and, I'm going to say, tops maybe 1.5 for your absorbance. Now, real quick, again, just to go over this. This protein sample is absorbing some amount of the light. Whatever it's not absorbing, it's transmitting. That is being quantified, and your digital display on your spectrophotometer gives you an output of either percent transmittance or absorbance, okay? And you can switch between them using that mode button. What you need to remember is that absorbance and transmittance are inversely related, and this makes sense. If you think about it, if this sample is capable of absorbing a lot of light, it's not going to really transmit a lot of light. So what you're going to see is, if you have a high absorbance, you should have a low transmittance. If, however, this sample is not good at absorbing stuff, so you have a very, very low absorbance because it's not good at absorbing that light that passes through it, then you expect to see a really, really high transmittance. Okay? So again, low absorbance, high transmittance. High absorbance, low transmittance. So that's the general concept of what we're doing in this lab. We're using the visible spectrum of light to tell us the ability of a solution to absorb that particular wavelength that we chose in this lab of light. Okay. Once we determine how much of that light is absorbed, we're going to use that information to help us figure out the relative concentration of an unknown concentration of protein solution. Now, what I'll show you next in the next part of the review is how we actually know that what we're looking at is just the protein and not any of the other elements that we have in this test tube. Okay. This is the general principle of spectrophotometry.